good afternoon to all of you let's start today's class in today's class we are going to talk about acoustics of small rooms small studios etc the kind of rooms and homes we live in we are going to discuss some of the acoustical features of such surroundings in this chapter now we are in the last unit of our syllabus and we have three more chapters to go thankfully as i had told in the beginning we have the largest chapters in unit 1 and the smallest chapters in unit 3 so these chapters are rather small very concise and we can finish them quickly so today's class we are going to start discussing talking about acoustics of small room just to remind we have just finished the acoustics of large auditorium auditoria rather in plural uh these large auditoria has different characteristics of acoustic properties while the smaller rooms and homes will have different we will try to establish that difference and see what are the challenges and advantages then we are going to talk about sound images particularly with small rooms in mind but then some of those principles can even be applied to auditoria so these are the two topics that we have to discuss or talk about today so acoustics of small rooms now in a small room remember the sound takes very little time to travel if you recall the acoustics of large auditoriums we have discussed that the sound may take 20 millisecond 10 millisecond to reach to the people sitting in the front rows and it may take around 50 to 80 millisecond for the reflected sound to reach them so the early sound that is the direct sound and the early reflected sound can have large gap but in a small room that gap diminishes the direct sound reaches in less than 10 millisecond even the earlier reflection there is hardly any distance it may reach in 20 20 30 millisecond and the reverberated sound or reverberation time can be very small many of you have done reverberation experiment at your home and you have noticed or you must have noticed that the reverberation time is very small so these are the challenges over here there is hardly any difference between direct and reflected sound reverberation time is very small so it is very difficult to distinguish between these two as a result the sound uh, sound is uh, sound is not spaced out in a sense that in a sense that the sound is very intimate So remember, we had discussed about intimacy. We had seen that if the sound reflections are very fast in a very short interval of time, then the sound is sound appears intimate. So here, sound is by default an intimate sound. In a large auditorium, making the sounds intimate is a challenge because due to the size of the auditorium, the first reflections take longer time. so intimacy is less in a large auditorium but in a small room intimacy factor is very high but it can be a challenge as well remember many of us would like to mimic the effect of a large theater at home and in that scenario this could be a problem short reverberation time is also an issue so sometimes some sound some type of music speech etc it appear more pleasant with having some optimum reverberation time in the last chapter we had seen for different purpose the reverberation time has to be optimum so very short reverberation time gives a challenge to it 
So in a small home, the sound is inherently intimate. But if you want to mimic a large auditorium like experience, then there are challenges. So typically sometimes some reverberations are added by the software. Some delays introduced in the sound by the reproducing device, your speaker system, etc. to produce a concert hall effect. So these days, as I have told you, the speakers are available with microphones. They emit a test sound in the beginning. The sound is reflected from the wall and from that they will calculate how much is the distance, what is the location of the speaker in the, in the hall, what is the location of the speaker in the room and then accordingly adjust or tweak the sound frequency. Typically the home surfaces are less absorbing. I mean if you look around in your walls in, or in your home most of the walls are plastered walls. Very few very few people are going to put soft acoustic tiles on the wall. So most of the, the walls are less absorbing and uh, they have individual frequency resonances as well. So for example if you have a room imagine a room which is closed on all directions it will have some sort of resonances along x y and z axis typically these resonances are an extension of the formula that we have studied earlier remember for a tube which is closed at both the ends what was the resonant frequency remember i'm talking about tube closed at both the ends tube closed at both the ends have resonant frequencies which are similar to those of a string which is tied at both the ends okay so a string which is tied at both the ends has the formula v by 2 l uh, the v by 2 l into a constant l so general formula for a closed room resonances could be V by 2 small l by l whole square small m by w whole square n by h whole square. Now in this l, w and h are the length of the room, width of the room, height of the room. l, m, n are integers remember they take the value 0, 1, 2. So for example, if m is 0 and n is 0, then I am not looking into these two. Square and square root will get will vanish. You get your formula back, uh, a const, an integer times v by 2l. That is the tube closed at one, or at both the ends. So when the tube is closed at both the ends, at both the ends, you will get displacement nodes. Remember? And these are the frequencies of vibration. But if there are more than one, dimensions are present then the general formula looks like this uh, if any two of these integers are zero that is m n l or n l and n or l and m any two of these integers are zero then it is called axial mode that is along the length uh, if any one integer is zero that means you are talking about x y plane and tangential mode an oblique mode when all the three modes are present. So typically in a small room the, the sound travels back and forth between the walls forms stationary waves and these stationary waves resonances occur at these particular frequencies. Also small rooms have short built up of these stationary waves. They, they are small so the building up is very quick and the decay of the stationary wave is also fast. That is why if you are talking say to your friend and suppose you enter in a smaller room from an outside your friend can immediately recognize your change in your voice. The moment 
or you yourself can recognize the change in your voice you hear your voice outside say of your building enter in the staircase keep talking on the phone and hear the difference in the sound that happens because of these resonances which are set up immediately these are the contours of equal sound pressure in a rectangular room in an axial mode so now these are the pressure contours remember contour lines you are familiar the lines of equal values so here it's the line of equal pressure values just to revise or recall from what we have learned earlier if you have a tube which is closed at one end i mean if you the on the closed end of the tube you get a displacement node remember displacement node so if this is my room and if i imagine it to be a closed tube then i will get a displacement node here and i will get another displacement node here but we all know a displacement node is nothing but a pressure anti node why and how go read your last year's textbook so displacement node is here it becomes a pressure anti node so this is pressure anti node okay with a these are normalized pressure values so maximum pressure variation happens here at the pressure anti node as you go further you will encounter a pressure node hardly any change in the pressure then uh, again pressure anti node and pressure node and pressure anti that's how the pressure will vary you can notice that one thing is sure whatever may be the dimensions of the room remember the wavelength will depend on the length and the music or the sound which is being produced but whatever may be the dimensions of the room you will always get a pressure anti node at the this wall and the pressure anti node at this wall if you are looking around along this axis remember this is one axis mode in the last slide i have shown you that two integers are zero then you get an axial mode further this is an example of a tangential mode so out of the three integers one is zero along z axis but x and y axis there are stationary wave formations so just like you had an ex stationary wave formation along this side you may have a stationary wave formation along this side plus and minus here represent now remember um just to tell you along this side this is a pressure anti node along this side this is also pressure anti node so you get a high pressure a pressure anti node here pressure anti node here and then at some integral multiples within the room in this case it has shown just one plus or minus you are all familiar in a stationary wave if you are in two neighboring loops then on one side if the particle move in one direction on the other side the particle move in the opposite direction so there are variations okay so that is plus or minus so you can now see that typically high sound pressure appears at the corners corners are the places where the sound pressure is always high and that is why if you want to put some sort of sound absorbers etc then the best place to put a sound absorbing medium or sub uh, system is at the corner do remember that shaw room resonances remember that we have just told you that uh, small reverberation time could be a challenge in a small in a in a small room environment so what happens is if you recall the reverberation formula it is some constant into volume upon area multiplied by coefficient of absorption that means it is directly proportional to volume inversely proportional to area into coefficient of absorption now in a small room volume is anyway small so reverberation time is inherently small 
if you want to increase the in reverberation time by any way, any chance, then area is also fixed. The only way to do is by reducing the coefficient of absorption. Lesser the coefficient of absorption, more would be the reflection, more sound will stay inside the room. That one of the example of such a room could be a tiled shower room or a bathroom. The tiles and stone on all the surfaces provide a very hard reflecting surface and sound remain for a long time inside. Along with that, remember it's a small size so it gets resonances, resonant frequencies also. You can do the calculation of resonant frequencies of your shower room. If it is like uh, say 1.5 meter in length to around 2 meter in width to around 2.5 meter in height, you can calculate what are the resonant frequencies. And you will be surprised that many of those resonant frequencies will be between 50 hertz and say 200 hertz which fall in the category of the vocal cord of human beings, both male and female. So the shower room has got two advantages. One is that it gets resonances at human vocal uh, cord frequency range. And second is because of the low absorption, there is a comparatively larger reverberation time. And that is why you will find that the bathroom singing sounds very rich, full bodied and resonant. And that is why you know that bathroom singing is very common. People do enjoy it. Other rooms you may have some challenges. So for example, if you come to your living room or a bedroom, you will find that of course the main wall should be of concrete and maybe some plaster hard plaster or tiles be there but then very quickly it is modified if you have a sofa then the upholstery plays a role the sofa upholstery absorbs a lot of sound energy the curtains absorb a lot of sound energy beds etc carpet are going to absorb the sound energy and therefore increasing coefficient of absorption will reduce the reverberation time and maybe it will reduce the richness of the sound a bit. However, if you have a large hall, then there could be sufficient reverberation time and it can be challenging because sometimes some music does not require large reverberation time. So if you have large reverberation time in a large hall, then you might have to put some absorbing surfaces. How are the frequencies distributed in a room? So resonant frequencies are determined by the dimensions as we have seen. Length, width and height. If the room is cubical, then frequencies are more or less equally spaced. That is in the upper diagram. You can see that the gap between the different resonant frequencies more or less equally spaced. However, if the most of our rooms are not cubical, they are cuboids and therefore you are going to get some more common spread in the frequencies. If it's a 1 is to 2 is to 3 ratio rooms, then you can see there's a lot of resonant frequencies present and many of these frequencies can enhance or reduce the pleasure of the actual music being played in the room. In fact, that is why many of the sound systems which you will find that they sound so great in the, in the showroom, when you bring them home, they may not sound that great. Inherently, because the the, the challenges which are posed by small rooms. 
in the next part I'm going to talk about the sound images now this need not be directly concerned with the small rooms only but nevertheless it's a very important idea many of you hear about stereophonic sound and uh, surround sound etc so I'm going to present some of the basics of the uh, sound arrangement and this is starting with sound images so if you have two sound sources say one placed on the left one placed on the right I'm starting with a very simple situation remember the earlier we were talking about only one sound source if it is one sound source then the source of sound is the image of the sound source but if there are two sound sources then the confusion can happen now how do you differentiate between the two sources so one thing we have already studied or learnt earlier is the frequency difference so so what happens at low frequency so you know that the diffraction effect takes in and at low frequency the difference in the time the how much delay between the left and right ear happens that decides where are the two sources if the two sources are fed the same sound then the delay will decide where is the final image at high frequency you know that it is intensity difference that determines the direction of the sound now I have an image here let me show you first now let's look at the focus of the first part here here I have two sources left source of sound SL and the right source of sound SR SR means sound right sound left I have a person who is sitting in the middle now here now both the sound sources are played at the same time at the same signal and the same loudness level same strength also generally in such experiment people are blindfolded for some time then the sources are played and then people are asked to figure out from which direction the sound is coming from once they say the direction of sound that they are receiving once they arrive on that that is noted down so in most of such experiment where two sources are of equal intensity same signal same distance people have said that it's not two sources it's just a single source and single source is placed at the location of A so most of the people will not identify two separate sources they will say that this is just A so what they are doing is they are pointing at A and saying that the source is here but the real source is not here what they are actually getting is an image of the source real sources are SL and SR so this is called sound images the formula that gives or relates theta 1 and theta 2 left right what's theta A and theta A here is theta 1 and theta A is PL minus PR upon PL minus no some mistake here I guess PL plus PR should, should be there okay now what happens is if one source moves away um, okay so let me go step by step so if these two are the sources if suppose left source is made louder if its intensity is increased if the intensity of the left source is increased then people will perceive the sound image has shifted to the left towards the louder source so it is obvious inevitable remember so if the two sources playing same sound remember but one is being louder people will perceive that the sound as source is at B point now again 
they are playing the same intensity in the third case but the right source has been pushed behind is pushed behind in such a way maybe around one third of a meter in such a way that there is a delay between the sound that is reaching from the left and reaching from the right and that delay is around one millisecond in that case also people perceive that the sound is source is shifted to the left and here what happens is the precedence effect takes place the human mind processes the sound that comes from SL as the direct or the first sound and this sound is the first reflection and assumes that the source is towards this side so C is my apparent source however however there is a twist in this third part the twist is that even though the right source has been pushed behind if it is made louder than left source then in that case C shifts back to the center line so you can see that you are compensating the time delay of sound by loudness that means the sound which is delayed which is behind which is coming after some time it can be compensated by the loudness but only to a some extent not beyond a certain extent so it is possible to trade off amplitude for time delay within certain limits so here is an experiment that has been done and recorded we just briefly discuss the results so you have a person sitting middle of the two speakers the x-axis represents the time delay between the two speakers that how much the delay left speaker has compared to the right speaker and the y-axis represent the 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 intensity or the decibel level between the two speakers left speakers being louder than the right speakers now this curve represents the combination or the values of x-axis and y-axis coordinates for which the source appears to be at the center so one can easily look at it carefully if the delay is 0.1 millisecond you can see that if the delay is 0.1 millisecond that is if the left speaker is delayed by 0.1 millisecond but if it is say maybe around 1 dB louder 1 dB more louder compared to the right side speaker then in that case it becomes it up, still appears that it is at the center if the delay is increased to 0.2 millisecond then the loudness of the left speaker has to be increased further okay so this solid line represents the combination of delay and the loudness difference for which the image appears at the center however there is a limit to it so moment you go beyond 0 0.7 0 0.8 millisecond this breaks down and then the source then the person perceives them as two different sources of sound etc and it compensation does not work out okay so we can stop our discussion at this stage today next class i'm going to talk a few more simple ideas from this chapter and we will take up some problems thank you till then